so we have a 27 year old uh, woman she come to you in emergency department after losing consciousness for 2 minutes while she was standing in the line at a supermarket she recalls nausea and a feeling of warmth spreading over her body immediately before passing out her friend a nurse who was with her during the episode noted a weak pulse of 40 per minute definitely she bradycardia is there the patient was not confused after the episode and she never experienced a similar event in the past she has not seen a doctor in several years and takes no medication she doesn't use any tobacco alcohol or any such drug patient father suffered a heart attack at the age of 50 her sister has a seizure disorder her bp is 84 by 60 mm of mercury that means hypotension is there ec shows normal sinus rhythm with no other abnormalities other than bradycardia otherwise no evidence of any myocardial infarction or any other problem well most likely diagnosis is what the reason why she had this problem the answer to this question is neurocardiogenic syncope well is also known as vasovagal syncope well it's a most common type of syncope there are so many types and causes of syncope but this is the most common type now this is due to excess of vagal tone and we know very well vagus is the one which is a parasympathetic nerve parasympathetic nerve is going to reduce the heart rate going to reduce bp also so definitely it, if you stimulate vagus nerve that going to reduce heart rate now before i go for any uh, further discussion i have a question for you write down the answer i just talked to you that vagus causes bradycardia do we use this clinically also anywhere write down the answer yes we use we used we stimulated vagus especially to control psvt paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia we use okay we do the rubbing in the carotid massage we do the idea is to stimulate vagus nerve and very very important point when we advise for carotid massage it should done at one at one place never it should be done together both the places the right can lead to sudden cardiac arrest also so but we knew that vagus stimulation is a way to treat para psvt also well now in case vagal tone in our case it lead to transient hypotensive reaction in our patient bp came to 84 by 60 body cardia is there and due to act, and this is due to uh, activation of autonomic reflex it is benign and self limited lasting for 10 second to few minutes in this case the lady was lucky to have a nurse with her who could check her pulse and bp etc and that confirmed that there was bradycardia and bp was low definitely if the lady was shifted to the hospital later on by the time the bp and pulse could have come to normal okay now this uh, syncope can be triggered by prolonged standing like this lady was standing in the queue uh, in a supermarket emotional distress and sometime painful to lie but this is what happened to one of the most common scene that is seen in actual clinical practice patient frequently experience dizziness nausea what this patient also some people may have fe- feeling of pallor can be seen on examination diaphoresis sweating abdominal pain and jelly sense of warmth prior to episode that was seen in our patient also so in our patient the dizziness was there and this is the classical line this is the golden line to remember feeling of warmth before having the episode you are thinking about vasovagal shock patient patient this type of patient usually have an excellent prognosis without any increase in morbidity and mortality because the transient phenomena is only due to stimulation of vagus and once that phase is over definitely the problem will disappear 
Now, let's look into other option, well, heart valve disease. Some of the heart valve disease can cause syncopal attack. Okay. Now, question is, which valve lesion can cause syncopal attack? Write down the answer in your copy. Well, the answer is aortic stenosis. Now, well, well, heart disease, as told you, aortic stenosis causes this. Now, the presenting symptom of AS, they may be asymptomatic. Sometimes patient with severe AS may not have any symptom. But otherwise, the classical symptom is pain chest, that is angina. Syncope. And third is dyspnea. Angina, syncope, and dyspnea. The classical triad is pneumonic is ASD. ASD is the pneumonic form. Symptom of aortic stenosis. Well, one thing more. Patient, as I told you, patient of AS may not have any symptom. But if the patient has any one of these symptoms, angina, syncope, dyspnea, that indicate it's a case of severe aortic stenosis, okay? And syncopal attack can happen. Now tell me one more question for you. Write down the answer. Tell me any disease where patient can have syncopal attack other than arrhythmias, other than arrhythmias. Patient can have a syncopal attack without any valvular heart disease. The valves are normal. But still patient can have syncope and rhythm is normal. Write down the answers. Well, answer is hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. So in this hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, there is left ventricle outflow tract, LVOT, left ventricle outflow tract, is scar narrow and that can lead to syncopal attack. Well, other option is seizure. Seizure and syncopal attack are sometimes difficult to distinguish. In fact, seizure happened to be one of the most important and close differential diagnosis for syncopal attack. Features suggestive of seizure include triggers, lack of sleep, emotion, stress, flashing lights. And remember, in case of syncopal attack, that can be happened by prolonged standing emotions also. Post-ethical state, confusion, disorientation, that is not seen in syncopal attack. Prodomal aura can be there, patients feel that I am uh, about to happen. Unusual body posturing and tongue laceration. Mind you, all these, when we say all these, we are talking about generalized tonic clonic seizure. When we say DD is generalized tonic clonic seizure is there. Well, we talked about so many features. Out of all these features, which are the following, the single most important by which you can say this is surely we are dealing with seizures, not with syncopal attack. Write down the answer. Out of these, which is the most important? Answer is tongue bite. Tongue laceration or tongue bite is the single most diagnostic tool that it is seizures, grand mal seizure. Now, before I proceed further, let me tell you something unique about the tongue. Tongue is the one which is totally muscle. There's no bone. And tongue is a unique muscle which is attached at one side. Rest all muscle, they have an origin and they have an insertion. Tongue is the only one which is at attached one one place. And the third, which is the most beautiful thing in the cre in creating of the tongue. Tongue is the one organ which is always moving when we are awake, either eating, talking or chewing, whatever it may be. But still, and tongue is surrounded by 32 teeth. Still, tongue bite doesn't happen in a normal person. So that's why now you understood that it has got Tongue bite is when, say, 
bleeding tongue or tongue bite is one of the classical feature which indicate a seizure that we are dealing with grand malapilepsy. Well, okay. Now, one more thing, absence of postictal state in this patient makes seizure unlikely because in syncope attack, that postictal state is not there. Six sinus syndrome, cardiac conduction disorder, especially AV conduction block, six sinus syndrome can cause fainting, definitely. And they are they generally without preceding sinus symptom, just like syncopal attack. But patients usually have some evidence of conduction abnormality on ECG, but in our patient, the ECG was perfectly normal. So this option is unlikely. And moreover, it is most commonly seen in the elderly person. Our patient is not that elderly. And patient bradycardia due to transient increase in vagal tone during episode rather than underlying conduction disorder. So we are giving, so he goes in more in favor of syncopal attack with a vagal shock. Vertebral basilar insufficiency is an option. Next choice. This can lead to transient ischemic attack can produce syncopal attack but rare because it is mainly the posterior circulation which should be involved. And TIA is not very common in posterior circulation. And patient has no risk factor for stroke, diabetes, hypertension, smoking, nothing like that. So this option also very, very unlikely to be there. And moreover, stroke are these, these patients do not recover so fast. In our patient, they reco it recovers within a scarf, very short time the patient recovered. Golden line to remember, neurocardiogenic or vasovagal syncopal attack occurs due to excessive vagal tone. Episodes are preceded by nausea, diaphoresis, bradycardia, pallor, and BP is low. Pain stress and situation that include medical uh, needles and urination can precipitate vasovagal syncope. They can be precipitated by these conditions also. Okay, but in actual practice, one of the most common present ka reason is due to prolonged standing. So we have a 70 year old lady and she come to you, she is diabetic, she is hypertensive and COPD for the last 20 years. She also has bilateral osteoarthritis. Her symptoms are suggestive of angina but her ECG is normal. What is the, which of the following is the next best investigation? The answer is dobutamine testis. Why this answer? Why not others? So, we use dobutamine stress test, which is a so a type of pharma, pharmacological stress test. And this we use in uh, any, any type of pharmacological test test. We use for evaluating any obstructive coronary artery disease. And it is done for those who are not able to do adequate exercise. Maybe due to amputation or severe osteoarthritis, like in our patient. She's a 70 year lady. She, she has bilateral osteoarthritis. So we don't expect her to run on the TMT machine or maybe any other reason where she is not. The patient is not able to exercise. Then we uh, like to go for any of the pharmacological stress tests. Now, what are the example of pharmacological stress tests? We can use dobutamine test. We can use dipyrabinol or we can use adenosine. So they are the three drugs that we can use for pharmacological stress tests. So now I have two questions for you. Write down the answer. Okay, now in TMT test, what is maximum heart rate? And what is the target heart rate? Well, it is that in we all know very well in TMT machine patient has to run. Right? So, write down the answer. 
मैक्सिमम हार्ट रेट इज 220 माइनस पेशेंट एज सपोज द पेशेंट एज इज 40 ईयर तो इट विल बी 220 माइनस 40 विल बी 180 विल बी द टारगेट हार्ट मैक्सिमम हार्ट रेट व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट टारगेट हार्ट रेट इट्स 85 फाइव परसेंट ऑफ द मैक्सिमम हार्ट रेट ओके सो if a patient age was a 40 year 180 is the target heart rate then even if he is able to do the 85% of this that means this somewhere around 170 it if he can achieve heart rate of 170 then we say target heart rate has been achieved okay with this basic concept we talk about exercise test what we call tmt this is done in tmt machine treadmill test in this, we ask the patient to run on the machine. So definitely when the a person will be running on the machine, it will produce tachycardia. It will produce tachycardia. At the same time, BP also increases, usually systolic BP increases. Right? So it is best, it, it is used for which type of patient who are able to reach target heart rate, THR, target heart rate which I told you is 85% of the maximum heart rate in other way where the patient can run also patient has to run on the machine to achieve the target heart rate so it's done for those people but it is not useful for those who have left bundle branch block who have pacemaker patient who are unable to reach target heart rate okay they are not able to run they get tired, they get fatigue, or they get pain, or the who can get dyspnea. So in such cases, it's not suitable. Now let's talk about other tests. Dobutamine test test. Dobutamine is a beta one agonist. So this increases heart rate, BP may or may not increase well it is specially used for those who have a reactive airway disease like in our patient patient is a known case of COPD and of course we do for those who are unable to reach target heart rate TH, THR target heart rate like in our patient our patient is already either a COPD patient and even if he asks her to run on the machine, she has bilateral osteoarthritis, she will not be able to achieve target heart rate. And definitely that it is not good for those who have tachyarrhythmias, this is not used. So, now let's learn more about dobutamine injection also. It's an ionotropic agent. Dobutamine, what we use in the stress test, is a synthetic catecholamine. That's why it is a beta-1 agonist is there. So it's a sympathomimetic amine. Why it is a synthetic catecholamine? It's got strong beta effect as, uh, as compared to alpha effect, more on the beta-1 agonist. It produces systemic vasodilatation and increases the inotropic st state. Okay. So higher doses may cause increase in heart rate and exacerbation of myocardial ischemia also, right? Now, so we have seen the exercise tests and we know that why in this patient of the question, dobutamine test, test is the best. Now option A is incorrect. As I told you, patient has bilateral osteoarthritis. So that is, option is not correct. Now let's talk about adenosine or dipyramidal test. Well, they are non-selective adenosine agonists and they dilate coronary arteries without increase in heart rate and BP. Classical feature, okay, they are simply going to dilate the coronary arteries but no effect, main effect on the heart rate, BP. Now it is suitable for which patient? Those who have LBB. Remember, pacemaker, patient who are not able to achieve target heart rate. Point to be noted, all these were the contraindication for exercise test. So that's why, that means those patients who are not able to, uh, where we can't do TMT tests, we can go for adenosine or dipyramidal tests. So where they can, we cannot use 
reactive airway disease like in our patient patient has already COPD and patient or patient or only taking dipyridinol or theophylline these tests should not be done well so so now you are clear about it why option c adenosine test is is not correct in our case because patient already has uh, copd and pick and these tests are not done in reactive airway disease echocardiography and coronary angiography are never the first line investigation in a suspected case of angina we always go for test test or tmt and followed by echocardiography and coronary angiography they are never the first line treatment for a patient of angina suspected angina with normal ecg golden line to remember in a patient of reactive airway disease dobutamine test test is the single is the best test test to evaluate coronary artery disease well i hope you like the session just to inform you we have following courses for you smart medicine there are 350 hours of pre recorded video lecture of whole internal medicine it includes all super specialty and allied subject covering a to z including basic concept about every topic second we have tests and discussion there are more than 1000 question which with discussion of the questions sample question and discussion you saw in this session now third thing is medicine simplified which is a textbook of medicine harrison is the ultimate book to read medicine but it is too vast reading one page of harrison you need half an hour to understand you need 2 hours but you need only 2 minute to forget what was written in that page then what is the solution we have medicine simplified it's a textbook of medicine but so called mini harrison it's a summary of what you need to read from harrison the book is available in amazon also now these three things are more than enough for your md dnb medicine and family medicine final exam preparation need ss exam preparation you don't need to read any other book these three are complete in all the aspect for more detail you can contact at this number it's a mobile ad, as well as whatsapp and this is my personal email id anybody want to reach to me you can contact me at this email id thank you very much